Uh, right, everybody, welcome to part two of this discussion on the Jewish war against whites. Picking up uh, where we left off in the last video, talking about uh, how we are indeed at war. We can deny it all we want, but uh, war is being waged on European uh, people, European societies, and it is most definitely a Jewish war from start to finish. Any effect of war always involves uh, an invasion, and this is just what we see happening with this war. Again, in this country, in Canada, New Zealand, Australia, all across Europe, right? Invasion by illegal aliens. And again, the uh, illegal aliens, whether they realize it or not, uh, are just as much of a victim in this as the European countries that are being invaded by them, right? They're losing as well as the uh, people of European stock, right? Everybody's getting intermixed. Everybody's losing their culture. But the Jews, all the while, are preserving theirs. Funny how you're called a bigot or a racist if you're against mass uh, immigration, and yet, their country, again, is very uh, limited in, in, you know, who they let in, right? How come they're not called racist? Just like uh, they'll call everybody else a Nazi, and yet there they are engaging in the, the, the Nazi uh, paradigm, you know, uh, the way people understand Nazi to mean oppressive and abusive of human rights and, there they are engaging in those very type of, quote, Nazi tactics uh, against the Palestinians, right? My, my, my. Isn't it high time uh, that we as a society stop falling for their little games? Luckily, that is happening to a large degree. Uh, their flagrant abuses of the Palestinians now is causing the world to take notice. And, you know, the little Holocaust uh, crybabying it's not working so well for them as it has in the past, in spite of all the shekels that they're shelling out to get people to shill for them. So that's some good news. Anyway, what helped pave the way for this in this country with this uh, invasion of illegals actually goes back to the Jew-led changes uh, to our immigration laws that began in 1965 under LBJ, the Sephardic little scumbag, um, which, you know, began the process of replacing, uh, you know, whites with, with uh, immigrants. Um, and again, I'm not objecting to foreigners coming over here. This country was built on foreigners coming over here. Uh, but this this mass migration policy flooding the country uh, and not going through legal you know procedures and again giving them benefits, blah 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 blah. it's it's not legitimate, it's not legal. Uh, it, it's not sane, right? This policy is absolutely outrageous. Amongst other things, look at the crime that it brings, uh, you know, into this country, right? This all began to whip into high gear in 1965 when Jews and only Jews began, uh, you know, to make changes to our laws, our policies. It's always them, always. Everything that is toxic to society, if you trace it to its root, it comes up Jew every time. Same with the gun grab BS, right? Legislation to limit uh, your guns, you know, push for gun registration and uh, licensure, and, you know, blah, blah, blah. It's always them. Always. I'll get into that discussion uh, later on. Anyway, another good war strategy uh, must involve pitched battles and open hostilities. And of course, we see this happening as well. It has been happening, right? All of the uh, uh, killings, burnings, lootings, 
the riots, um, not just the BLM and Antifa, but, you know, we've had other riots. Look, look at the, in the wake of the Rodney King verdict that went on in LA uh, back in the 90s. Horrific, horrific stuff, right? All Jew orchestrated. With every one of these, they were hoping to kick off a revolution, right? Communist revolution. Look at the BLM symbol of the fist, right? You can't get more communist than that. Uh, it was even a red fist, right? It's in your face. They wanted a communist revolution. It didn't play out the way they were hoping, as it had done so well uh, for them in so many other countries, right? But don't worry, they're not going to stop. They're relentless. They'll wait for another opportunity or create another opportunity, uh, hoping to bring it about then. Absolute evil bastards. Uh, you, you just wish that people could see through because it's very thinly veiled, their little scheme, right? You wish people could see through it. Once you see it for what it is, you you it's very obvious, right? It just shows how dumbed down people are that they can't recognize this because this pattern has repeated itself so many times in the past. But look how they have turned our cities into war zones, right? Look at how um, many cities have, you know, hordes of people on the street and the tent communities strung out on fentanyl and all kinds of other drugs, dying left and right too. Oh yeah, they don't just want to zombify you. They want you dead. And, you know, they knew that COVID was going to create a lot more homelessness, right? It was going to drive people, uh, you know, out of business. People are going to lose their homes, wind up on the street. Uh, and then from there, we'll get them turned on to drugs to drown their sorrows and kill them off, right? Fentanyl is so deadly. It, many people have died just trying it once. But once you get hooked and you're doing it multiple times, it, it's just, you know, it's just a matter of time. It will kill you. And I, I don't know how people can't see that this is all by design. The drug was created for that very reason. Anyway, next on our list, every good war program involves the use of weapons, right? And oh, are they using weapons? Weapons of all kinds. Weapons of propaganda, deception, you know. But also... Look at their high-tech weapons. They're waging war on us now from every front, aren't they? Look at all the bizarre weather we're having here and abroad. It's all part of their war. It's affecting not just European societies, right? The whole world is being affected by this, but primarily it is. Uh, they are targeting European countries, the U.S., Canada, uh, you know, New Zealand, uh, Australia. They want to wipe us out, folks, and unfortunately, they're doing it. You have a lot of whites that actually hate themselves, right? They loathe themselves. They, they're burdened with this feeling of guilt. They want to make reparations. As I said before, I'm all for reparations for slavery. Go after the ones who created the enterprise and ran it. Let's take down... Goldman Sachs, shall we? They've got plenty of shekels that they've been stealing from the rest of us. Let's take their money. Where's the real Robin Hoods of the world when you need them, right? Rob from the undeserving rich to give to the deserving poor. I'm all for reparations. Absolutely. I'm all for population control, too. Absolutely. Let's get rid of the elite Jew pig bastards. Not only are they not needed, they are a cancer on society. The world will function one hell uh, of a great deal better without their presence, right? We'll be living in a relative paradise without them. So yes, there's some really good population control uh, ideas for you right there. Purge the earth of its biggest problem and you will see things turn around overnight. Look at their little do weapons, right? There's another example. The only reason why we haven't been seeing a lot more forest fires is because it got so much attention with the Maui thing. It should have gotten attention a long time ago with what they were doing in California and Canada. But the Maui thing, 
uh, they got a, a little too bold. It became way too obvious, right? And so I, I've been amazed everywhere I've been going. People are, are you know, n not so much now, but, you know, back in August, September, everywhere I was going, people were talking about it. Yeah, can you believe that? That's That's not normal. Something's going on there. People were aware of the government's role in what went on there. So, you know, they're kind of backing away from that a little bit right now, or else we would have been seeing a hell of a lot more of that crap. But, but uh, still, many people are yet not aware of the little high-tech weather modification BS. And so, yeah, they're whipping that into high gear. They're, they're hitting us left and right. Uh, and, you know, between that and the, the forest fires, notice how they're targeting areas that the UN has already uh, mentioned, you know, as areas that they want to turn into biosphere preserves to drive the people off the land, right? How convenient that it, it's... And then, you know, all the chemical spills, right? Those have been occurring in such areas too, to drive the people off the land. It's a big land land grab. And then they're creating artificial food shortages, you know, all the food processing plants that have been burning down. And then they want to starve you so that, you know, when you can't go to the supermarket because they jammed up the food supply chain, they don't want you to be able to go fishing, right? So they've been poisoning uh, rivers and lakes, and you've got all these fish washing up dead all across the U.S. This has been going on in Canada, all across Europe. Huh. All a part of this war on you know, European uh, societies, guys, from every conceivable angle. Taking our jobs, sending them over to third world countries, driving down the wages, hiring you only part-time with no benefits, uh, from every angle, like I said, right? Dumbing the kids down in the schools, propagandizing them with garbage TV shows and uh, movies and video games. And there's no avenue of society left untouched it's all toxic and it all comes from the same source elite jew pig bastards it's all a part of their war on gentiles in general but again more specifically because this stuff is going on more heavily in european-based societies it's a war god damn it it's a war and denying it isn't going to make it go away we have to face the reality of it and then deal with it The only way we're going to win this is to stop cowering in the corner and being afraid to mention the Jew word. As long as people keep doing that, they're going to get away with it. We need to start calling these bastards out. They are the problem. I'm so, sorry to the, so sick and tired of the truth movement using, you know, obscure words. The bankers, the globalists, you know. I played that game myself years ago out of ignorance, right? Until I began digging deeper and realized these bankers, these globalists, they're Jews. Oh, sure, there's some scumbag sellout goyim that have joined ranks with them. But it's not a goyim agenda. It has always been, still is, and ever shall be a Jewish agenda. Any effective warfare strategy, again, involves of necessity a good propaganda campaign against uh, the enemy, right? And indeed, that's exactly what they're doing. Who owns the media? <laughs> that tells you right there, right? Because they own the media, of course, they have complete control over that avenue. And that's all we hear 24-7, right, is white supremacy, how bad the whites are. And astonishingly whites are falling for it never mind uh, you know other races right probably whites are falling for it more than other races are it is astonishing the power of propaganda the power of lies right it is true if you tell the big lie long enough and often enough people are going to believe it People are more likely to believe big lies that are outrageously uh, off the charts wrong, right? Than they would to believe, you know, the smaller ones. Because the big outrageous ones 
when they're so big, people can't fathom that, you know, leaders would tell big lies like that. And if they see others falling for it, right, they can't fathom that people would could be that dumb to fall for something so big. So they're actually more likely to fall for a big lie. And lo and behold, that's what the whole world is doing, right? They're falling for the, the big lie of, uh, you know, white supremacy, that it's pervasive and whites are the problem, and blah, 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 blah. And a whole lot of other big lies too, aren't they? There really is no such thing anymore as common sense. It isn't common. People do not have any sense. I've often said we're living in a giant insane asylum, and unfortunately that's pretty much exactly the situation we're in, isn't it? A giant psych ward run by psychopaths. But just look at how this war is playing out. Again, it's not just the problem of the illegals. That's a big part of it, right? Mass influx of... Uh... And by the way, this is interesting. Uh, I've been seeing several videos lately pointing this out, that a lot of the illegal aliens coming into this country, they're not refugees fleeing from oppressive uh, governments. You know, if that were the case, you'd see mostly families with their children fleeing oppressive regimes, right? No, no, no. The whopping bulk of the illegals coming into this country are young, able-bodied males. In other words, fighting persons. Some people have speculated that a good majority of these illegal aliens are actually UN soldiers. Now, there's an interesting prospect. They're flooding our country with people that are probably militarily trained, right? And so when the moment arises, they're going to take over from within and no one will know what the hell hit them. It'll all look like, oh, we had no idea this was going to happen. Isn't that an interesting prospect? They're probably being secretly both funded and supplied with weapons too by the good old boys at the CIA and... Uh, the BATF, the ones who will bust you for having Grandpa's 22 in your attic uh, that's not registered, and yet they're giving them weapons to use against you. How much you want to bet? I, I wouldn't be the least bit surprised if that's their little agenda they have going. Waging war, again, from every uh, angle, right? Through the media, as I said the education system, dumbing kids down under the guise of educating them, right? All the lobby groups buying off politicians, selling you out, uh, all our politicians with dual citizenship, with Israel. How in the world can people think that they're going to be loyal to this country when they have citizenship with Israel? There's no such thing as dual citizenship when the other country that you have citizenship with is Israel, right? Your loyalties are always going to be with Israel. That's where Jews always pledge their allegiance to. Doesn't matter if they put their hand on the Bible and swear to uphold the Constitution. These are people that swear the Kol Niter, uh vow every year, right? Which voids all other vows. Their allegiance is alone with Israel. Look at all the, you know, politically correct philosophy that they've hammered away at us with for decades on end, here and abroad, right? Again, to silence your free speech uh, and, and give them an edge that way as well. Um, look at the, you know, the, the, the banking system, the, the outrageous cost of living, the way food has gone through the roof. Price of gas, they're always toying with that one, right? Especially in time of need. You know, in, in the wintertime, people need more oil to heat their homes. Of course, they, they're, you talk about price gouging, right? War from every angle. Look at how unaffordable housing is. Not just buying a house, renting an apartment. In some cases, you know, years ago, Getting an apartment was the way to escape the rising cost of housing, right? Well, I can't afford a house, but at least I can afford an apartment. Today, 
in, in many cases, you're going to spend more for rent in an apartment than you would for a freaking mortgage. But people can't get around that because they can't afford the outrageous uh, high down payment in the first place to get themselves in a situation where they, where they can afford paying a lower mortgage than, than the higher rent costs. You know what I'm saying? They got all these little traps in your way so you can't get around, you know, the, 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 the barriers. Most people today, even though they have uh, a bachelor's or even a master's, right? They can't afford to live on their own. They have to double, triple up, even quadruple up uh, with, you know, three, four other people just to pay the rent. They can't live on their own. And yet they've gone through the education system. They got their friggin' degrees. I, I know many like that that are in situations just like that. This is abominable. This is not acceptable. And it was all set up this way on purpose. Didn't happen this way by accident. It's all a part of the little war on frickin', uh, again, Gentiles in general, but specifically white European-based societies. It's all part of their war. They've made havoc of our lives, folks, while they're sitting uh, high off the hog, you know, sucking off of us, parasiting off of us, not only through the corrupt banking system, uh, you know, their multinational corporations and on and on, but look at how our government and many other governments around the world are shelling out money to Israel by the billions every year, right? Money that could be used here to build infrastructure, create jobs. No, it's going over there. And do they ever pay it back? No. Are they ever required to? No. Are they ever asked to? No. Do they ever volunteer to pay it back? <laughs> Can you guess what the answer to that one is? They don't pay back one dime of it. In fact, they use that money to turn around and buy off your politicians to get them to pass legislation that favors their interests even more while they screw you and gets them to send even more money over to Israel every year. More weapons, more technology. The Mossad steals our technology all the time, but the irony is they don't even have to do that. Our government hands it over to them anyway. Wow, wow. And when caught stealing it, what does our government do? They simply send them back home so they can come back here a week later and continue where they left off. Nothing gets done about it, ever. And they cover it up like it never happened. The arrest is just window dressing, so it looks good, you know. No other country could ever get away with this, right? Things like that would be an act of war. Not with Israel, though. Are you getting psychotically pissed off enough yet? I hope so. The whole world population of Gentiles needs to get psychotically pissed off with these bastards. Anger is a good thing because it motivates you into a self-defense mode. And that's where we need to be. Not passive, not thinking that anger is something toxic and we need to go to anger management classes. You know how you manage anger? With a gun. That's how. That's how. You take vengeance on your enemies, right? If a criminal, if a thief is breaking into your house, you grab your gun and you blow the son of a bitch away, right? Before he blows you away. He's your enemy. He means you harm, right? Harm to you, to your property. You blow the son of a bitch away. And so when I talk about blowing these bastards away who are ruining the entire planet, are they not criminals? Of course they are. Do they not mean you harm? Of course they do. They need to be taken out, don't they? Of course they do. There's nothing wrong with saying that. It's a goddamn fact. If you don't say it, there's something wrong with you. That means you're condoning crime. Well, I don't condone it. And we got to stop being little crybaby and pussies in the corner. <gasps> oh, I can't believe he said that. Knock it off. Are you afraid of these little bastards? Really? That's exactly where they want you. Continue to be afraid and uh, see where that's going to get you. Look where it's been getting us, right? The public is afraid. You know that old saying? There's freedom when a government fears its people. But when the people fear their government, what do you get then? You get tyranny. 
And that's exactly what we have today. Absolute tyranny because the people are afraid of their government. Stop being afraid. Frigum. You're cooperating with them when you do that. You're doing exactly what they want. You're playing right into their hand. That is, in fact, how they've gotten away with so much for so long. Having you cower in the corner in fear. Also, in this war of propaganda and deception, you've got our universities overflowing with socialist and communist professors, right? Even in the... the, the the grade school level now, right? A lot of teachers are openly pushing communistic ideas, are pushing the LGBT crap on our kids, right? Everything twisted, perverted, corrupt, it's all part of this war to degrade us, to get us to throw our arms up in despair, to get us to, you know, to think that, oh, we just can't beat them. We just might as well join them, right? If you can't beat them, join them. It's the very attitude they want you to have, right? They want you to think that, oh, it doesn't matter. Nothing really matters anymore. You know, just go along with it, right? It's all part of the conquest. Changing your mode of thinking, getting you to lower your standards so that the unacceptable becomes acceptable. That's what they're all about. Radical feminists, that's all part of it too, isn't it? Uh, multiculturalism. I'm all for accepting other cultures, right? I love other cultures. When I travel abroad, I want to experience their culture. I don't want it uh, diluted by mass flux of illegals, right? Whatever country I go to, I want to experience that culture. I want to try their food. I want to see their entertainment, you know, their dancers, their play, whatever, right? We're losing that. Everybody's losing in this game, folks. Horrific, disgusting, and abominable. Um, so, but you know, when they talk about multiculturalism, no, it's not everybody accepts one another and is, isn't prejudiced. If that's what it was, I, that that would be great, right? No, 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 no. That's not what they're talking about. They're talking about mixing everything together. So now there's no more individuality as a culture or as individual human beings, right? Everybody gets lost in the grand shuffle as they're mixing you all together. You got the one-worlders, you got the UN, you got, uh, you know, World Economic Forum, all of this abominable garbage that's got to go. The Christian Zionists, the Christian identists, all claiming to have the solution to the world's problem. They're all part of the problem. And even though the Christian identists recognize that there is, in fact, a war against whites, against European societies. They're correct. But their solution to that is to become white supremacists? Really? We're better than everybody else? Oh, right. You're not a part of the problem, are you? You're not accepting and embracing Jewish supremacist philosophy, are you? It's the same exact philosophy, just with a, a different... Uh, bent to it, but it's the same exact arrogant, self-exalting philosophy. In fact, you're playing right into their hand by fulfill it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. When they talk about white supremacists, you're being the very thing that they're complaining about. How do you like cooperating with their agenda? Christian identists, you stupid asses. But then again, if you didn't fall for their 2,500-year-old protocols of the learned elders of Zion, otherwise known as the Bible in the first place, you never would have fallen for that crap either, would you? That is the big uh, tear in the tapestry, right? That is the open door that welcomed you in, and you walked right into it willingly. Had you not seen that book for what it was, again, they wouldn't have entrapped you with their frickin' BS. Somebody made a comment recently here on Odyssey to one of my videos um, referring to me. I've noticed that once people reject Christianity, it's just a matter of time before they start uh, speaking against, uh, you know, the white race uh, or, you, you know. Oh, really now? Is that so? 
Oh, do you see the deception of that book, folks, what it does to people? It so completely twists and distorts your thinking. You don't know which the hell way is up, down, left, right, back, or front anymore. You're in a tailspin. You're in spin cycle big time, baby. Let go of that Jew book so you can finally think clearly once and for all. As long as you cling to it, you're thinking on a great many issues. Pretty much all issues is going to be twisted. You will have an improper concept of morality. You will have the wrong motive for any moral standards that you do have that are correct, right? I'll argue, though, that you really can't have any true sense of morality when you think that killing is okay as long as Yahweh commands it, even baby killing. I've heard Bible dupes defend it, and in their twisted thinking, they have to defend it because if they don't, then they're claiming that Yahweh was wrong when he commanded the murder of little babies. They can't do that. So they have to say that, well, in that case, it was okay. It's acceptable. You don't know what the hell morality is, you dumbasses. And most of you, your motive for doing what's right is just so you can get to heaven or avoid hell. You don't do what's right for the sake of it being right. Stupid asses. Which is why most of the time when people wake up on the occasion that they do wake up and realize that their religion is a fraud, Christianity, Islam, whatever, right? You know what happens, don't you? In most cases, because they weren't truly grounded in real morality, doing what's right for the sake of it being right, and not wanting to bring harm to another person, when their motivation is simply their religion, when they lose their religion, out the window goes their so-called morality too, right? It shows how fake the morality is then, doesn't it? When I stopped being a Christian, my morality didn't change. Didn't change one bit. Except I realized that, you know, the condemnation of sexual relations between two mature adults uh, you know, I realized that wasn't wrong. That's just an arbitrary command from the little sky fairy with the fangs, horns, and claws. What's wrong with that? When you're being responsible and mature and no one gets hurt, and you're not cheating on your spouse, or, you know, absolutely nothing wrong with that. But guess what? That command has nothing to do with morality at all. Nothing. The only time the sexual act between two mature, responsible, consenting adults is immoral is when someone's getting hurt, right? You're cheating on your, your girlfriend or your spouse or your boyfriend, whatever, right? That's when it becomes an issue of morality. But when that factor isn't involved, no one is getting hurt between the two persons or a third party. There's nothing immoral about that at all. Nothing. But anyways, other than that, my moral standards didn't change one bit, right? And it's because I always believed in morality for the right reasons, right? Even though my mother was a, a Bible believer till a dying day, she always taught me to do what's right because it is right. She didn't say because God said it, right? That was part of her motivation, but she loved what was right because it was right. And so, you know, I never had that improper view of morality. So when I found out that Christianity was a fraud, oh, sure, it upset me, but it didn't change my moral stance. But in most cases, when Christians or Muslims, whatever, you know, when they lose their religion, yeah, they go off the deep end. They literally go off the deep end and start engaging in all kinds of moral, immoral activities because their moral foundation was cracked to begin with. It was built on totally false premises to start with. The weapons that they unleash on us in this war uh, have no bounds and there's no end to them, right? They're constantly coming up with new ones and continuing to use the old ones uh, on a daily basis, right? Just look at, you know, abortion, right? Mass abortion. I'm not talking about if a woman gets raped, you know, uh, or if her life might be in danger if she has the baby. Who the hell are you to tell a woman who decides to get an abortion in cases like that. Shut your fat ass mouth. But at the same time, this whole idea of mass, mass murder of babies get knocked up today and show up the clinic tomorrow, get knocked up again next week, show up at the clinic the next day. You know, it, it's abominable. It's atrocious. Especially when you look at, you know, partial birth abortion up until what, just a few weeks before the baby, hey, 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 before the baby's to be born. 
it's mass murder. Of course it is, right? This is another one of the little uh, ways of waging war against us. Millions of babies a year, just in this country alone, are destroyed as part of this war on Gentiles, war on you know, European society, especially. <clears throat> you know, militant homosexuality, that's all part of the LGBT thing I mentioned. Um, and when I say militant, yeah, I'm talking about not not the average gay person who doesn't endorse that kind of crap. I'm talking about the militant ones, right, who want to push uh, their agenda on others and wear their G-strings down Main Street, parading their bare asses in front of everybody, including kids. Um, the push for uh, euthanasia for the sick, the handicapped, the elderly. Again, it's all part of this war. Sterilization programs, uh, which were exponentially heightened and continue to be exponentially heightened through the COVID vaccines, right? Amongst the other toxins therein, it now is emerging that they have been putting sterilants in them. Well, that's not unusual, is it? They've done it in the past in other countries, uh, in, in certain countries, you know, in Africa and Asia and whatnot. Um, South America, you know, Bill Gates particularly has played a big role in that, right? Sterilizing millions. Now it's billions through the COVID vaccine. I read an article a couple months ago about in Italy, uh, the birth rate is literally down to, to zero. You know, when you look at the death rate as compared to the birth rate, it, it's pretty much even now. So the, the population is not growing anymore now. It's just as many people are dying, probably from the COVID vaccine too, as what are being born. The birth rate has significantly dropped, and that is because of the sterilization factor with the COVID vaccines. Oh, yeah. They want to stop population growth and, in fact, bring it down. So they're killing us off. They're sterilizing us. Uh, they're pushing abortion. These psychopathic bastards, again, are waging war against us from every angle. I mean, just look at this mess. And it's all they're doing. All of it! Anyway, as I mentioned, this agenda, this war that's being waged against European-based societies uh, has really uh, been taking place on a, on a massive scale right in European countries themselves. Yes, it's going on here uh, on a very heightened level. Yes, it's going on in Canada, Australia, New Zealand. But it's been really going on uh, even worse, in fact, in European countries. There's been a huge influx of militant Muslims in a great many European countries. It's horrific what's been going on over there, even worse than what's going on here. And one particular Jewess that has been playing a big role in this, of course, uh, she kind of disappeared off the map for a while, but she was still busy behind the scenes. She reemerged recently again uh, in, the, in the public eye. But uh, little Miss Barbara Spector, a former American who uh, now lives uh, in Sweden, or at least she, she lived there last I checked. Um, and she had been working and still continues to work behind the scenes with the uh, Swedish government particularly to adopt a much more liberal immigration policy um, like what has been going on in so many other European countries and, and here in Canada, on and on. She also set up uh, a non-denominational group, the Institute of Jewish Learning in uh, Stockholm, with the uh, Greek name of uh, uh, Paidaya to uh, propagandize, you know, the uh, gullible Swedish uh, religious groups there into accepting the uh, destruction of their culture under the guise of multiculturalism. She was working through the churches, right? And when you can get the churches to endorse something, you're going to get the masses to go along because they'll think, oh, well, this must be a movement of God if our ministers are going along with it, right? 
And here's that ever famous quote that many of you are probably familiar with. Listen to what this little bitch says. You have any doubt that Jews are behind the mass influx of illegals in this country and in countries across Europe, Canada, on and on? You have any doubt that this is their agenda? Well, look what this little wretch said. Uh, I think that there is a resurgence of anti-Semitism because at this point in time, Europe has not yet learned how to be multicultural. And I think that we're going to be part uh, of the throes of the transformation, meaning we Jews, which must take place, she said. Europe is not going to be or not going to remain the monolithic societies uh, that uh, they once were in the last century. European countries are not going to remain monolithic. The Italians are going to remain Italian. The French are going to remain French. The Germans are going to remain German. Why? Because we, she says here, meaning we Jews are behind the mass influx of, you know, uh, of aliens that are being intermixed with them so they all lose their identity, their uniqueness, their culture. This is a big part of their war. And then she goes on to say, Jews are going to be at the center of that. They always have been, right? It's a huge transformation uh, for Europe to make they are now going into a multicultural mode and Jews will be resented because of our leading role. Leading role, of course. They want everyone else to mix, but they don't allow that in their illegitimate country, do they? Can you believe what these son of a bitches get away with, folks? It is absolutely uh, beyond words. As much as I've studied these SOBs over the years, it, it still amazes me. I, I just, I scratch my head and in, 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 in just marvel that the swelling masses are still not aware of this and they call you, you know, every name under the book when you try to bring it to their attention, which is an absolutely incontestable and easily proven goddamn fact, right? Jews are the enemies of all humanity, but especially European-based societies, right? They're waging relentless war against us 24-7 from every conceivable angle, right? And yet you can't get people to see this. Are you friggin' kidding me? It's like looking at your neighbor's house and seeing smoke coming out of the window and you see some flames and you're like, oh my God! So you run over and uh, you're yelling out and, and you can hear their voices and, and sure enough, oh my God, my worst fears are confirmed. They're still in here. So you run upstairs and uh, you're shaking them. Come on, let's go. What are you doing? Get out of bed. Can't you see the house is on fire? <clears throat> and they're sitting there telling you, oh, knock it off. It's probably uh, just the, the chimney uh, smoking up, you know. No, I saw it. Your whole house is going up in flames. We literally only have a minute or two. And they're just arguing with you and calling you crazy and paranoid and, you know, no, knock it off. And so you have no choice but to just leave the house to save your life. They won't cooperate. They won't leave. You're pulling them and they're resisting you, right? So you have to sit there and watch the house go up in flames and see them burn up with it. That That's the kind of world we're freaking living in right now, you know? This is what's going on. You, you, you try to tell these ignoramuses that war is being waged against us, and you know who's behind it, too. They refuse to admit that the war is going on, even though they can see the signs of it all around them. And they not only don't admit the war, when you try to tell them who is actually the, 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 the guilty party that lit their house on fire in the first place, they won't listen. Holy mother of Jesus H. Fargan Christ. I, I just, I can't believe that this world works this way. But it does. This is exactly how it works. It's exactly how it's been working for a very long time now. So keep denying it, idiots out there. Not my listeners, uh, my subscribers, of course. But, you know, 
keep arguing, you dumbasses out there. And uh, it's just going to get worse and worse and worse as long as you don't face the reality of what's going on here and refuse to acknowledge who the problem uh, troublemakers really are. Well, you're soon going to wake up in a world of absolute despotism such as the world has never seen the likes of before and there will be no escaping from it if we're going to escape from what's coming we need to do the escaping now not when it's too late and it obviously isn't too late because the bastards would not still continue to lie to us through the media as they're doing right the one thing they fear the most is that the swelling masses do catch on and their whole pipe dream goes up in smoke. By the way, <clears throat> I uh, interrupt this uh, presentation for a special announcement. <laughs> um, I forgot to mention at the beginning of the video, um, one of my subscribers, I'm sure several of you know him or at least saw you know, some of the comments he's made uh, over the months. Silas uh, Speaks is the name he goes by. And he has a really good channel here on Odyssey. Um, but specifically, um, you got to check out, he, he's doing a, a series now. He's got a video up called Blood on the Sand. The subtitle is uh, The Story of the Amorites, Hyksos, and uh, Abrahamism. So, uh, but you can find him just by typing in Silas Speaks, and that's one word, no space. That's S-I-L-A-S -S, Speaks. And uh, yeah, go check out not just that video, but, you know, his whole channel. He's a really good researcher. He's got some great stuff. Um, so, you know, I highly endorse it. Uh, you know, hit the subscribe button, as they say. And I'm going to mention this on my other channel, too. He's a really good guy. Anyway, anyway, back to our discussion here. Um, but yeah, I mean, that little bitch right there, that quote, is is golden that quote should be etched on every billboard uh in, in this country and all the other european-based countries so people can see exactly what's going on and who's behind it right who isn't fed up with the mass influx of illegal aliens in this country and so many other countries abroad everybody's pissed off about it right who's got half a functioning neuron between their ears and is paying attention but how very few indeed are aware of what the source of this frickin' problem is, right? It's the goddamn Jews. And again, guys, it's because of crap like this that they've been thrown out of so many countries. Uh, and yet, they're not being thrown out today, are they? Because people aren't even aware of it. And they apparently, for the most part, don't even want to be aware of it. They're in denial, right? But uh, the little bitch Barbara Specter isn't the only Jew that's boasted about this. And you don't just have to take quotes like this from Jews where they brag about being behind, you know, illegal uh, immigra mass uh, immigration. Just look at the records, right? Look at the politicians that have been at the helm of pushing for this. They're all Jews. But anyways, here's another statement going back several decades to the 70s. Senator Jacob Javits once stated... The AJC, which is the American Jewish Committee, uh, has opened the gates of immigration to America and Europe. Jews, he said, particularly the American Jewish Committee, uh, were instrumental in opening the gates of immigration in both America and Europe. So if you're pissed about the mass migration of illegals into this country and so many other countries, European-based countries, as indeed you should be. Well, if you didn't know before, now you know who's been behind it. Now you know who to be actually pissed off with, right? Stephen uh, Steinleit, who was a former head of um, national affairs for the uh, AJC, the American Jewish uh, Committee, stated, quote, for perhaps another generation, an optimistic forecast, the Jewish community is in a position where it will be able to divide and conquer and enter in selective coalitions 
that support our agenda. He's talking here about mass migration of legal aliens, right? He said it's a policy of divide and conquer. Of course, both uh, native citizens and the foreigners coming into any given country, like what they're doing with, with European-based societies now, right? Of course, both sides are going to get resentful toward each other. And that's just what they want, right? They want the Gentiles angry and fighting amongst themselves so that the real troublemakers have no negative attention on them whatsoever. Oh, do they love it. They're waging war, not just against the target country that the illegals are coming into, but against the illegals themselves, right? And even though they're giving handouts to them and the illegals think, oh, wow, this is great. In the long run, they're getting shafted too because they're losing their identity, right? It's, it's a game, sadly, that at least so far, we, we can't win and they can't lose, right? Because of the ignorance of the masses. Well, that's what needs to change. The Jewish uh, Susan Sontag made this comment. She said, the white race is the cancer of human history. Imagine that. Yeah, how Jewish of her. This is their attitude toward whites, folks. We're the cancer. And why? Because we have been the ones more than any other group that has withstood them, kicked their asses out of, you know, country after country after country. And so this is not only a means of preventing that from happening again, but it's also revenge for it having happened in the past. They're the enemy. They're the problem. And they guts to go, baby. But, you know, just so you can see how far-reaching this problem has been, how long-range it has been, right? It didn't just emerge in the past few decades. It didn't even just emerge in 1965. That's when it started kicking into gear. But let's go back to April 23rd, 1952, to see that this problem uh, was already rearing its ugly head, and that there were those like John Rankin who made this uh, comment, um, speaking before uh, the House. He was a congressman. Listen to the observations he made back at this early time here, 1952. He said, um, they whine about discrimination, meaning the Jews. Um, do you know who is being discriminated against? The white Christian people of America. The ones uh, who created this nation. So he's saying the Jews are the ones who always whine about being discriminated against, and yet it's you know white Christians that built this country. Um, well, he threw Christians in there. I would just say white, you know, European-based uh, immigrants that come over here. The majority of the ones that come over here, right, were white Europeans. They're the ones being discriminated against. Is, is his point, right? And he's absolutely right. And it's still the case now, isn't it? But this was the case back in 19 frickin' 52. He said, communism is racial. Yeah, it's also Jewish. Uh, a racial minority seized control of Russia, uh, Bolshevik Jews, and in all of her satellite countries, he said, such as Poland, Czechoslovakia, and many other countries uh, that I could name. So he's talking about how, you know, they unleashed similar problems there, and now he says they're doing it here as well. Um, he said, uh, they, the Jews, have been run out of practically every country in Europe in the years gone by, you know, back in the Middle Ages, the Dark Ages. Um and if they keep uh, stirring up race trouble, notice they were doing this back then, stirring up race trouble, especially, you know, between blacks and whites, right? They ran the slave trade, and now they're blaming the whites for it. This was a really big problem uh, back then, right? And they've been trying to revive it ever since. It worked so well for them in, in decades past. That's what the BLM and Antifa crap was all about, right? They wanted to revive it again. 
get the whites and the blacks fighting against each other so the attention is off of them and they can continue to engage in their criminal activity and uh everybody's too busy fighting amongst themselves in, in, instead of rising up against them anyway um if they allowed to continue to force their communistic program he said on the christian people of america there is no telling what will happen to them here yeah yeah absolutely right well nobody listened to him or to uh mr mccarthy or anyone else who tried to warn america of what was going on and so they and their little communist agenda has continued to march forward unchecked and look at the big fargan mess that we're in now but you know what really sucks as bad as things are right now they're just getting warmed up baby oh yeah yeah if a stop isn't put to these son of a bitches, we're going to look back at 2023 as the good old days. Just like we look back at, you know, 1975 as the good old days. And they were good, even though we were getting shafted by them too, right? It just has continued to spiral downward and get worse and worse and worse. It's going to continue to do that. They will see to it. They always have, right? The only way that's going to stop is when we the people stand up and put a stop to it. And if that doesn't happen, it's never going to stop. You think the FBI is going to stand up against them? Do you think your local police, uh, you know, the White House, Congress, really? Really. Not only are most of these people already part of that tribe or cryptos, but they're beholden to them for many reasons. One simply being the paycheck, right? No, they don't work for us. They're not interested in us. They only care about kissing the ass of their pocket feeders. If this thing is ever going to turn around, guys, and that's pretty much how it's always been in history, right? It's been the people themselves who said, screw this whole system. It doesn't work for us. In fact, it's working against us. And all hell had to break loose, right, to turn it around. That's the sucky part. That is the only way to fix it. And yet you don't want to see that, right? I don't. I don't want to see all hell break loose, but Jesus H. Christ, that is, in fact, the only way that this mess can be fixed. All right, guys, thanks for joining me. Uh, like I said, in the next video, I'm going to be getting into uh, on this channel. Um, probably, well, actually, I'm not sure yet. I haven't decided. i got several directions I want to go. I will be talking, though, about... Uh, the mass influx of legal aliens in much more detail um, to settle the matter once and for all. You have any doubt that that's been a Jewish agenda? Yeah, I probably will do that next. Um, that'll be a good follow-up to this. We'll be going into exquisite detail, naming names. You're going to see how, yeah, every step along the way, it's been a Jew enterprise without question. So, all right, guys, yeah, I'll catch you then in that video. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you then. Take care.